your innovative maths book gives a very nice definition why it is called identities. An equality which is true for all values of variables. An equality which is true for all values of variables is called an identity. So it is an equation and it is an equation which is true for all values of variables. So that is why we call it an identity. Otherwise you may call it a special product. Your concise book also calls it direct method. So these are the various names. Don't get confused. Now let us look at a few special products or identities we can use. The first one we look at is x plus a into x plus b. You may use what we learnt in the last class, multiplication of binomials. Now if you use that, you go first term into second expression, x square plus bx plus ax plus ab. See, x into a plus b gives you this. Then a into a plus b gives you this. But directly we are going to use a formula and we call this as identity or special products. Okay? So x plus a into x plus b this is an identity or special product. So from now on you won't be multiplying as you did in chapter 11. Whenever you see binomials into binomials, as in this case, you will begin to employ or use identities or special product. Okay? There is one more we can study now, which is the product of sum and difference of two terms. Product of sum and difference of two terms x plus y into x minus y is equal to x square minus y square so we are looking at these two special products or identities in chapter 11 we were multiplying it we were learning multiplication of algebraic expressions. Over here we are looking at formulas or identities which we are calling special product. Now I want to get into exercise 12a of the concise maths of class 8. So concise maths book class 8. I am using concise maths class 8 exercise 12a. I want to look at questions one, part one. Very easy questions, good for practice. X plus eight into X plus three. Now you should be able to identify the terms and which formula or identity you're going to use. X plus A, X plus B, X plus eight, X plus three. So the first term must be the same. The second term may vary. So then we use the formula x square a plus b. This is taking the place of a, 8 plus 3, x plus 8 into 3. I hope you can see how we are using the formula. x plus a is now taken it is taken its place, x plus b, and so on. So very simply, your answer is x squared plus 11x plus 24. Is that clear? We have used this identity. Part 4 of exercise 12a, question 1, part 4. x, uh, b minus 3 into b minus 5 b minus 3 into b minus 5. Now don't get confused with the minus sign. The formula is for 
plus, but we can also use it when there is a minus. I have not written this formula many times with plus or minus. Your book may show you that, but I have written it only once. So let us use the formula. B square, the first term is the same. The first term, there's no problem. It is the same. Now, I have written plus because according to the formula, there's a plus. Now, A is minus 3. B is minus 5. So in place of A, we have minus 3. In place of B, we have minus 5. So I am showing that in brackets. The sign outside remains the same. Into x plus minus 3 into minus 5. So what have I done? To use the same identity, I have taken minus 3 as A and minus 5 as B. Otherwise, the identity or the special product remains the same. So your final formula answer, minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8. Now plus is outside, plus minus is minus 8x, plus minus into minus is plus, 3 fives are 15. Is that okay? So even though the sign is minus, the only thing you do is you represent A as minus 3, B as minus 5, and use the same identity or formula. Is that clear? Moving on to question 2. Question 2, I will do part 2 and part 10. Question 2, part 2. What does it say? Use direct method to evaluate 2 plus A into 2 minus A. Okay, I won't do this here. Let me see which formula we are using and write it there. 2 plus A into 2 minus A. I am only writing it here for the benefit of you to understand which formula or identity I am using. Is it not this formula or identity which is useful here? Why? First terms are the same, 2 plus A minus A. So it is the sum and the difference of two terms that we are finding the product. According to the formula, 2 square minus A square, which is 4 minus A square. Is that all right? I hope you understood it. So we have used this special product. That is why for the, your benefit I wrote it under the formula. So you know which formula, which identity is for which type of questions. Part 10, 3 by 5, A plus half into 3 by 5, A minus half. Now, if you are able to look at that question, you will see we can use the same identity. It is the product of sum of two terms and the difference of the same two terms. First term is the same, second term is the same, plus, minus. So moving on, 3 by 5, A whole square minus half A or minus half square. So first term square minus second term square. 3 square is 9 by 25, A square minus 1 by 4. That is your final answer. So I have shown you how to use both identities. From the concise book, question 1 you can use this one and question 2 you use the other. Now let us move on to look at question 3. Question 3. So I'm going to rub out both the identities and the formula. It is in your mind or in your copy. You are going to be alert to see which identity I am using. Now, question 3. I want to do part 4. 
Let me write the question, and then we will move on to see how it works out. 3 minus 2x, 3 plus 2x into 9 plus 4x squared. Now, let us attempt this part first. We will attempt it part by part. A minus B, formula, A minus B into A plus B. So you know what happens, A square minus B square. 9 plus 4x square. That remains as it is, we are working out this part. So this is 9 minus 4x square, 9 plus 4x square. Now again, if you look at it, I'm just showing you a minus b into a plus b. You don't have to write this when you are writing in the exam. Practice time, you may want to highlight it for your own practice. In the exams, you may, there's no need to do it, okay? Now, a minus b into a plus b is a square minus b square. So we have 81 minus 16x square. Okay? Now, during these classes, even though it is online and it is on your mobile or television, it is not a TV serial, please. Whenever you are getting online for studies, you get out your maths book, you get out your copy, and you are attentively trying to follow the class, as if you were in class. Don't watch it as a TV show and say, I am done and go back to sleep. Practice the topic. Next, moving on. Question 4. Question 4. What do we have in question 4? Use the formula. I am using the concise maths class 8. I'll give you some questions as assignment from the innovative maths at the end. So be prepared for that. So we're using this formula to solve part 1. 21 into 19. Now, I have seen many times in the exam when such a question is given, the students don't take the trouble of using the identity or the formula. They simply multiply and write the answer. Uh, you won't get marks for that. Try to represent this, these values in this form. You, when you represent it in that form, then you can use the formula. First get the form, then use the formula. So 19 plus, okay, 20 plus 1 into 20 minus 1. Did you get that? What is 21? 20 plus 1. What is 19? 20 minus 1. I just told you. First write it in this form. A plus B, A minus B. Now it is in that form, you can apply the formula. So A square minus B square. 400 minus 1, which is 399. So first get the form, then apply the formula. Moving on, 4 part 4. I hope you understood that. Practice it. Be alert. Be attentive. Question 4 part 4. 9.8 into 10.2. This is a decimal value. Again, 10 minus 0 0.2. 10 minus 0 0.2 is 9.8 into 10 plus 0 0.2. So now it is in the form A minus B, A plus B. Please check. 10 minus 0 0.2, 10 plus 0 0.2. Now A minus B into A plus B is A square minus B square. Is that all right? 
Moving on, 100 minus 2 twos are 4. I hope you remember your decimal places. Let me keep you in practice of that also. 0 0.2 means 2 by 10 into 2 by 10, which is 4 by 100. So in case some of you have difficulty finding the squares of decimals, you may want to change it to a fraction with 10 in the denominator or 100 in the denominator and then square it. Okay? So now you can subtract 6, 9, 99.96. Moving on. So this was your first exercise from the concise maths book. Expansions. We can also call them as expansions like a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. You remember these from class 7? a minus b whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square. These are all identities you learnt in class 7 also. a plus b plus c whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus c square plus 2ab, bc plus ac or ca. So these three identities or expansions you also know from class 7. I want to highlight a certain step forward from this. A plus B whole square is A square plus B square, uh, B square plus 2AB. But suppose it was X plus 1 by X whole square. That is also in the form A plus B. Because the first term and the second term is different. The formula remains A square plus, let me write B square, and 2AB. Now this is cancelling. Because A is X and B is 1 by X. So instead of writing it as 2AB, I can write X square plus 2 plus 1 by X square. In the same way, X minus 1 by X whole square is equal to X square minus 2 plus 1 by X square. So I don't know if you use these in class 7. But I want you to be careful to know these formulas and have more confidence not only with these formulas but also with these. Okay? In the same way, if I take one step further from here, suppose I put minus signs A minus B minus C whole square. So now instead of plus, I'm putting minus. So the formula. I'll just take one step to show you how you actually get the formula. Now watch this. A remains positive. The sign before A is plus, so there is no change in that. A remains as it is. Minus B whole square. The formula remains as it is. Plus, now in place of B, I write minus B within brackets. Square. Moving on for minus C also, I write minus C within brackets square. So wherever B was, I write the value inside brackets. Minus B. Minus B, minus C in brackets and so on. That is the only thing I want you to be attentive to. Wherever the sign is minus, you put it inside brackets. Otherwise, the formula remains the same.